Hello, Internet. I'm here with another little pet game update. Uh, today, I'm going to add something uh, inspired by a request from someone. I, I mentioned this on a previous video, uh, and that is to have graphics that kind of overlay, um, you know, other graphics going on. So here's an example. Found this animated GIF, just to be extra exciting, uh, online. Um, it does have a transparent background I checked. And I've already downloaded it and saved it into the code. So um, as a reminder, and, and I don't know, in case you haven't watched the previous videos, any file that needs to be kind of like web accessible, right? Like this, this image uh, has a URL. You write this page as a URL. If you want something to be accessible, uh, then it goes into this www root directory. Um, so, you know, when, when in code you say, uh, image source equals blah, 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 blah. You have to have a URL. So that's going to go again, it's www, w root directory. So I made a new folder called pet grounds, put in the sparkles. Here they are. They unfortunately don't animate uh, here in writer, uh, but at least we get a preview of the, of the fixed thing. And so my goal again is make it so that pets can have um, some sort of background that gets overlapped, right? It would be behind this pet or maybe in front if you want it in front. Maybe that's even something you want to make like an option for players to choose. Does it go in front or in back or whatever? I'll kind of leave that stuff up to you. Um, also, I want to say why this was inspired by a request and isn't like directly <laughs> the, the thing that the person requested is the request was to um, allow people to put like markings on top of pets, right? So that would be just a very specific image tailor made for this particular pet. So that when you overlap the two, it added, you know, have the visual effect of adding markings. Um, I don't know, I could have done that, uh, but I thought animated gifts are more exciting or something or more general. Uh, and anyway, the principle is the same. Whatever graphic you want to make, not a problem. Overlap it, choose if it's behind or in front. Anyway, so let's go do that. So first of all, I'm going to need a new column in the database to say, you know, for this given pet, does it have an effect and what is it? So let's just remind ourselves what the database looks like here. Uh, we've got a pet database player day or sorry, table, <laughs> pets table and players table. I'm not interested in the players today, but if we look at the data here, um, yeah, I've created lots of little accounts to test with, but it looks like tidbit is right here. And ideally we would have another column that says like, so for example, right, we've got the image that says little guy. That's what controls the, the appearance of the pet. This is, this is little guy dot SVG, right? There he is. Um, but we'd like another column to say, what are the either background or foreground effect? And I'll go ahead and make both. And, um, you know, if it's present, the pet might not have one or either, or, you know, or maybe it does have both, uh, but we need somewhere to store that information for the pet. And then how, for your game, how a pet gets that, I'm going to also kind of leave up to you. Uh, for this video, I'll just hack it into the column, but, you know, I don't know, maybe your pet goes on an adventure and there's just a random chance that it picks up some sparkles and now has a sparkly effect, or maybe there's potions you have to give to your pet, or again, maybe it's stripes and spots, and so it's a function of breeding. By the way, there's a video that shows uh, how to put breeding into the game, you know, so you could mix that in. So anyway, again, how you get the pet to have the sparkles, I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm just going to show you how you would have the sparkles in the database and show them. So anyway, I've rambled quite enough about what we're doing. Let's actually freaking do it. So in the pet table, I'll just add a couple columns here. I'll just throw them on the end. I don't know, maybe it would make sense to put up in here. It really doesn't matter. Um, they're all going to go in whatever order. Uh, they're all just going to get added at the end in the database anyway, um, which you also shouldn't worry about. By the way, yeah, don't waste your time trying to make sure that the columns are in a, I don't know, the right order. Like this is not your main, right? Like this isn't what you're building. You're not building a database with columns that are easy to use. You're building this. This is what matters. So don't, you don't need to waste your time worrying about column order. I don't know. That's the thing I've seen now and again. So just bring it up. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and say background image. Uh, I'm going to say nullable. You shouldn't. Sorry, I typed question mark there. IDE is smart and puts it here. So this is a nullable string. It's possible there's no value whatsoever. That is slightly distinct from having an empty string. And I don't know, maybe there's reasons just to say if it's empty. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Whatever feels right to you. Um, you know, I don't know. Null has maybe a, a greater, uh, I don't know, sense of nothingness than an empty string. So maybe that, that feels better to you. And I think in some cases it would to me as well, but I don't know. Let's just go ahead and say an empty string. That's easy enough. And for new pets, we'll have a default value. Nothing. We don't want anything in there, by the way. Again, if you like things to be a little semantic or human readable, you could say equals string empty. 
I don't know, people will pointlessly debate which is better for hours, you know, mostly about things that don't matter, like performance, which really doesn't matter in this case. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Do whatever makes sense to you. If you like string empty, go for it. If you like double uh, quotes, do that. Um, but anyway, here are the two columns to put the um, information in. And now we're just going to make a migration for that. So I don't know, you've probably seen this a bunch of times. Uh, open this in Explorer. If you've been watching these videos anyway. <laughs> Uh, let's go to PowerShell, Whoop. and we're going to say .NET, EF, database, uh, nope, migrations, add, and we'll say add pet, um, I don't know, add extra pet images. I don't know, what, what do we want to call this? Add, uh, I don't know, pet background and foreground. I don't know, let's say that, background and foreground, whatever. The name isn't super important, but it's nice if it's something, again, you know, for, I don't know, I don't know why I said the word again, but for your purposes to be able to go ahead and look at that. Also, I always forget to do this. I'm going to say it every video because guess what? I always forget. It's not going to be able to build and uh, do this migration thing if the game is currently running. So you have to stop it. Uh, and again, we, if you've been watching other videos, you will have seen this before. But let's go and check and make sure that the migration it made makes sense to us and that something weird didn't happen. I don't know. Maybe you forgot some code change, but this looks right to me. We're going to add the column pet or sorry, background image to the pets table, foreground image to the pets table. That all looks reasonable and good to me. So let's go ahead and tell it, yes, you can do that. And this will make the change in the database. Why are we going through all these steps? Why don't we just edit the database directly? That's a topic I've talked about in other videos. And you can also Google uh, code first databases if you're curious about more. That's what they're called in the C sharp land. Uh, I don't know, other languages and other frameworks call it something different, but we're in C sharp land, so we're going to call it <laughs> well, and specifically, we're in ASP.NET Core land. Uh, so anyway, let's reload this. Uh, that's not the refresh. This is refresh. Yeah, it never does that like I'd like. It's it's so weird. Um, pets. Hello, hello. I, I've noticed this happened before. It seems like I just have to disconnect and reconnect sometimes. So let's go ahead and do that. Pets. Ah, I'm clicking like crazy. All right, here we go. Here they finally are. This is so interesting to me. Sometimes I swear I hit refresh and it just gets it. I don't know. And sometimes not, like now. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. MariaDB, it's free. They ask you to donate. Uh, we're getting what we're, pay what we're paying for in, in some senses here. It's uh, a little wacky sometimes. But anyway, great. We have the columns in the database. There's nothing hooked up uh, to actually do anything with them. So before I do that, though, let's put the data, the data in here so that once we have the code working, We'll know because we'll see it, but let's have the data ready. So if I go in here, I called it sparkles.gif. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say sparkles.gif. Now you may notice this, is, I might as well talk about this. Over here, the image for little guy, I didn't put the dot SVG. I just called it little guy. And I'm letting the code put on the suffix, always going to be SVGs. That's a decision. I don't know. That's a decision I made, and maybe you don't want it. And in this case, for background images, this is a case, a strong case, I would say, to not put on the file extension because maybe some of your background images will just be straight up PNGs, maybe they'll be SVGs, maybe they'll be GIFs, maybe you want to do WebP. Honestly, I was looking for WebP. That's kind of the newer format. So I don't know, may, you may or may not be familiar or have seen it, encountered it in the wild. But WebP is a super new format um, that lets you do animations and transparent backgrounds with more colors than GIFs can have. GIFs are locked to 256 colors. Um, so WebP is a great, wonderful new modern format, but a lot of people don't really seem to be using it. So I wasn't able to find a um, Sparkles WebP file. But anyway, it kind of depends on what you want to do. When I was making this column, the thought in my brain was, I not only do I know that I want all the images to be SVGs, I want to require it. You need to be making SVGs for pets. Why did I decide to require that? Because they scale nicely. Um, I know SVGs have a lot of nice properties, and I just didn't even want someone to be lazy and be like, ah, I found this PNG off the internet and it looks good enough and I dropped it in, but you know, now it, it, it doesn't have the same quality as the other images. I don't know. That, that, again, that's a decision. It's a restriction on myself to kind of force me to do what I want to be doing, right? Make me, they, they call it pit of success. I want to fall into the pit of success. I want to be guided to do the right thing. And so, I don't know, in my brain, the right thing was let's make sure all the pet graphics are SVGs. But again, maybe you disagree with that choice and that would be totally fair. And I think the background images, again, are a case where you might say, doesn't make sense. We might have lots of different background images, or maybe it does. Maybe in your brain you're like, no, WebP is the thing we should be using. Don't put any silly GIFs in there. Don't put PNGs. Don't put JPEGs 
You really got to be Git. Um, so I don't know, or sorry, WebPs, you know, whatever. So pick, pick what you want to do. Um, I kind of feel silly for rambling about it for so long, but, but the point is I just wanted to call out like, why isn't there a file extension here, but there is a file extension here. Uh, whatever, different ways to do things. It'd probably be ideal to be a little more consistent or maybe not. Maybe, I don't know, especially if it's in a team setting, like, you know what, guys, we're agreeing. This is how it's going to be done. You know, whatever. You can agree with yourself as well. I rambled about this way too long. Let's let's keep going with the, the thing we're trying to do. So we have sparkles.gif. That is the name of pet backgrounds. Um, and that's something else I'm deciding that a little similar, right? I'm not going to put the whole path. I'm not going to say pet dash background slash sparkles. Um, that's something I do feel much more comfortable. I don't know, at least in this instance saying, no, 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 look, you, right? You can't put another pet image in the background. That would be nonsense. It's got to be things that have been made to be in the backgrounds. So in the code, I'm going to put pet dash backgrounds, you know, and append that to this background image to get the full URL. So again, all these weird, funny little decisions, um, make the decision that makes sense to you. Maybe you disagree with my decision that pets shouldn't be able to be in the backgrounds of other pets, right? <laughs> so you can do whatever you want here. And again, if you were doing um, like species variation colors, maybe you'd have different column for that. That's like, you know, I don't know, maybe you call the species and then like species texture, pattern, whatever, and then you have a separate directory for all of those, right? Separate from the sparkly backgrounds, mix and match all this stuff. Why do I keep getting distracted? Okay, so let's find, and let me go ahead, I'll just run the, the game again. Um, check out the house. All right, so no sparkles in the background. As expected, all we did was add a database column. There's no code to support it. So let's add some code. So here is the pet card. Um, it has an image, name, level, energy. I want to add something else. I want to pass some additional information in here. So I'm going to say background image. Um, and that would be the pet dot image. Great. And then we'll also add foreground image. And uh, sorry, I should probably call this out more because I'm kind of assuming you've watched previous videos. But this this is the My House page, right? MyHouse.Razor, which if we click this, it depends on your IDE. They'll have a button kind of like this. It's a different icon. Um, but this says, you know, what file am I looking at? Find it over here. And that's what this button does. And here it found it, my house. So this is in our pages folder. We have the index, the login, my house. My house corresponds to my house. And this is the page I want to edit. And if we look at how it renders pets, we can see, okay, if my pets is nothing, show loading pets, else, okay, it's not nothing. Let's go over all the pets. And then we're, we have this pet card here. Uh, and this pet card appears to be responsible for rendering the pet, right? We don't see anything else. There's a pet card and then some buttons. We do see those buttons. So this is the thing for rendering the pet. And if we jump into this, I'm going to say, so you may notice I added some extra properties here. Why are they green instead of bold blue? The reason is this pet card tag, which clearly invented, you know, part of pet game. It's not a, a normal HTML tag. Um, it hasn't been coded up to support these extra parameters. So... Uh, the ID is kind of letting me know with the colors. Uh, kind of mentioned this before. The ID colors are really, you know, pay attention to them. If it's not something you're familiar with, they're, they're trying to convey information to you. Sometimes it doesn't always work, but in this case it is. It's telling us. So let's go into, um, go to definition or declaration or whatever. It depends on your IDE, what word they say. Oops, that was the wrong thing after <laughs> making such a fuss about it. Go to declaration. Okay. And here we can see all those various parameters. Image, name, energy, level. Okay, now we want to add another one. Um, so let's go ahead and add. And you may wonder, why am I doing editor required parameter, blah, 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 blah. If you want to know about what all these things mean and all the different options for what you could put in here, this is a Blazor component, and you can Google Blazor components and learn all about them. Ask ChatGPT, whatever. Um, but for now, if you just want to kind of, you know, it's pretty obvious to see what's going on here. We can figure it out. Um, We'll just copy what we what we already see, not think about it too hard at the moment. And I wish the IDE wouldn't do that. It's trying to break things up onto multiple lines, and I keep being like, no, I'm pressing Control Z to, to stop it. All right. It's trying to, I don't know, it's trying to be proper and space things out a little more. But like, I don't know, in this case, I feel like this is pretty readable. So whatever. Um, okay. Now for what we've actually been talking about this whole time, we want to put the background image or foreground image, if they exist, right, if they exist for that pet, in here. So I'm going to start by just doing the stupidest thing. They're not going to overlap. We're just going to put a bunch of images in a row. Oh, but I do want to check. It, is it here? So we'll say um, if 
And we, we can do this a couple ways. So you could say if background image isn't the empty string, right? That's the default. There's nothing there. That is one way to do it. Uh, there's a nice kind of, I don't know, this is why I kind of like maybe null more than empty string, but you know, what if for some reason some code has a mistake where there's an extra space and, and when you're setting the, the pet background, you know, maybe you have a potion that removes backgrounds and you absolutely put another space in there. Um, that's a really kind of easy mistake to make. You might, you might miss it when you're glancing at the code that there's, there's somehow an extra space, especially if it's multiple lines or something. Um, so a better way to check to be a little more thorough as we can say, instead, there's string empty or white space or white, sp null or white space, here we go, null or white space. We can say, if the string, and this is a function for all strings, if string null or white space, this bigger string, is this string null or white space? That's what we want to know. Um, and actually we want to know, is it not that? And so this now checks not just for like spaces, but maybe a new line character or anything that, you know, to humans, I think we would agree is empty-ish, you know, intended to be empty, but not necessarily the empty string. So this is just a little safer check than just strictly checking the empty string. So I'll go the extra mile, I guess. Um, all right, sorry, I'm typing in a weird way. Okay, so we want to go, if we, let's see here, we, right, anything in WW root, again, is available on the, on the, internet, as it were, or in this case, you know, I don't know, your local running thing, but whatever, you get me. Um, so we want to go into images, and then we're going to go into pet backgrounds, and then we're going to throw in whatever this background image is. And you may notice here for the pet image, this is where I throw in the .svg. This is why all pets have SVG at the end, and that SVG isn't in the database. But again, for pet backgrounds, in this case, I decided we're going to put the file extension on there, so we don't need to uh, append it. You may also wonder why the parentheses here. Um, that is because in C sharp, dot means I want extra properties on this thing. So you could say, oh, actually, I want the background images length, the number value, throw that in. Obviously, that would be a silly thing to do. But if we tried to do dot SVG, it's going to look at that and say, I don't know what SVG is for background images. Like, it's not interpreting this as text because we have said, here's a variable, let's go. And so anyway, so if you need to get around that, you can just put parentheses around and then your it knows, oh, okay, we're back to text, right? This isn't code anymore. The code ends with that closing parentheses. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this and throw it into the foreground as well. So we'll just check the foreground image, copy paste, and let's restart. I really wish the apply thing was working. It's working for other projects. I've been doing a bunch of mono game, like C sharp, like desktop game stuff, and the apply thing works great there. And I don't know why it won't work here, but anyway, getting off topic. All right, so the sparkles are here, but I wanted them to be behind, not above the head of. Um, and just to show that this is uh, working for the foreground as well, but also not how we want. And by the way, when you change the, a value on a row, you have to click outside the row for for this particular client, for Heidi SQL, to save any of the data. And that's there are other clients that work that way too, but I mean, I can demonstrate this again. So you may see the red triangle. That means, oh, you've changed the value, but I haven't saved it yet. So if I went over and hit F5, I'd be like, why am I not seeing my you know, updated value? You have to click outside first. So um, sparkles.gif, I press, pressing enter, it's not saved, click outside. Okay, now it's saved. And so now it's actually gonna be here when we refresh. All right, so that sparkles behind, that sparkles in front. Uh, but again, they're not actually behind or in front. They're all just like in a line, which if you know HTML, you're not surprised. You were probably thinking that as I was writing this, you're like, Ben, you're just putting three images in a row. They're just going to be three images in a row. <laughs> How do we get them to be in front and behind? Uh, we can do that with some CSS. So let's see what there is for CSS. Cause I think there is. Something. So here we go. We say pet has a flex direction of columns. So if you're not super familiar with CSS and flex, that might not be super clear, but here's what it is. So this is pet and pet class and in CSS dot means for the class. So here's the pet class. We're saying it has a width of hundred pixels. Sure makes sense. Display flex, uh, I don't know. How well do you know CSS? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> what is display flex? Um, flex direction column might give you an idea. So that is telling us all the little elements underneath pet. So if we look here, so this image, this image, this image, this ribbon, uh, these spans, these, actually not quite the ribbon, but anyway, you know that for now, all these elements should be arranged in a column and flex lets you do that. You could also say 
hey, I want to see it in a row. And then, I mean, we can see what that looks like. It's not going to look great. I think we can just press F5 for that. Is that true? Nope, I'm wrong. I'm getting confused with something else. Let's refresh. Um, so this is going to show things in a row. Yep, also not what we want, right? Uh, so let's undo this. So what I would really like is these three images shouldn't be in three separate, um, you know, in the column, they shouldn't be arranged as three separate items. We want all three of them to be in one cell of that, of that column. So I'm going to do this, put them inside this div. And that's not quite done yet. Um, but I think we might see something a little different. Let's see. It's, it, maybe not because the math's quick. We'll, we'll take a look. Doesn't look any different so far, but trust me, it is. And actually, we, we can um, if we look at this. So here's the pet thing. It's got the display flex. And if you hover over each thing here, um, which I thought it did like a, maybe it does it for grid. I thought it showed the grid lines that kind of separate each cell. Um, but maybe that's for grid or something, or only, only visible if you've got gaps. Uh, so anyway, we and don't worry. I'm not going to go into it. So anyway, this is one big item. This is one. This is one. And I'm sorry, I'm ho hovering them over on the right. But the, you can see the highlight on the left. Um, so these are the cells in this column. Uh, this is all one cell. Great. But these are still um, just kind of floating here. But I have a solution in mind. So let's look. This image has been given a width of 80 pixels very explicitly. Uh, that's interesting. She looks like they all have been. So I think what I would like to do, we can use some CSS trickery. So let's call this like, I don't know, image, layered images. Let's say that, right? That's what they're, they're meant to be. Uh, we can call this whatever we want, but I want something, again, that may make sense to me. So let's go now and make a new class for these layered images. And what we want to do is say position relative. Interesting, the GitHub Copilot, super smart AI, maybe knows what I'm up to. What's it going to suggest? Uh, why is it being so smart? Okay, so this is this is how you how you do it. If you want things to overlap onto each other, you have to say, "Hey, I'm going to position you." D don't do your normal positioning logic. I'm going. Oh, nice. We got pop up. Uh, I want you to be absolutely positioned, which means I'm going to tell you exactly where you go, um, and then you just give it some pixel coordinates. You might think that that's like zero zero being the the very corner, one of the corners of the screen, depending on how what direction you think zero or your positive numbers ought to go. Mathematicians would say that should start down here. But for funny historical reasons, on monitors we start on the upper right, and or yeah, sorry, upper left, upper left instead of the lower left. So anyway, the numbers, positive numbers go down, uh, can be a little confusing. But by saying that this layered images thing is position relative, that makes everything inside that's absolutely positioned absolute relative to this. Is that a little mind bending? Probably. It's I'm, I'm, like I've been doing this for so long. It, it's, it's very intuitive, but. I know that right, there's so many weird words. You got to remember all this stuff. So if you haven't used this trick before, it might be a little mind bendy. But but the gist is, we make one thing, a, a containing element, this div, to be position relative, and all the children are position absolute. And then we say, fine, you're all position absolute. Listen to me. You're all getting flung up to the upper left corner of of your parent container. The only other thing we have to do is the parent container isn't going to know how big it should be anymore because I don't know, it's extra rules of CSS. Once, if, if, it, if all the children element are absolutely positioned, usually it kind of arranges the children inside and says, okay, I know how wide and tall I ought to be to fit all these things. But once you start saying, I don't know, you could be anywhere. You can, you can be way off to the left, or, you know, minus a thousand pixels off to the left. And then, so the, the parent uh, element will say, I don't know how big I am even supposed to be anymore. And I can, show you what this looks like. It's easier to show these things and save them. So why am I not doing that? Um, unless there's something I've forgotten, it'll be very embarrassing if I uh, said all that and then it works for other reasons. No. Okay. So this is the problem. And if we inspect this again, we can see this thing says it's 100 pixels wide. It at least knows its width. That's because the container said, hey guys, you're in a column and your width is 100, this pet container here. But it says, but I don't know my height because all my, all the elements inside me are positioned absolute. I don't know how tall I ought to be. So we need to give it a height. And we can play with that here to find a height that we like. Uh, we know that these images are 80 pixels wide um, and they're square, so therefore they're 80 pixels tall. So a good guess is probably what if we make this 80 pixels. However, uh, something else you may have noticed is that these images have been given a margin and margins go 
around a thing, top, right, bottom, and left. Um, all of this is top, left, and right, and bottom. But anyway, there's a little extra padding. There's 0.25 of a rem, which is uh, a relative to the font size. Uh, so well, how much is that? Really what we should do is say, let's find that rule, image pet. Let's not worry about that anymore. We're positioning all these images, right? These ones here. We're positioning them with brand new logic anymore. We don't need this old logic. Whatever it was, we can get rid of it. So let's get rid of it. And then in here, we can say, fine, you should be 80 pixels wide. And actually, we want these to kind of be visually centered. Um, so, and we know that the parent is 100 pixels wide. So let's position this 10 pixels from the, oops, sorry, wrong side. There we go, from the left. So we'll get 10 pixels on the left, 80 pixels in the middle. That leaves 10 more on the right. And now it will be nicely centered. There are other ways you could center this maybe. Is, Depend, you know, I don't know. This, in some ways, this isn't a great way. It's maybe the easiest to think about, but if we wanted to change the sizes of things dynamically, this would be a little trickier. But let's just, I don't know, do this for now. Um, the other thing is we wanted to sell a little extra padding on the bottom. So let's do the same thing. Let's face it from the top and we'll say, uh, so it should already be 100 pixels, but it doesn't hurt to be extra uh, explicit. So we're going to make all the layered images, this whole thing, this whole div, we're going to say, look, you're 100 pixels wide, 100 pixels tall, and then the images inside will all be 80 pixels by 80 pixels, and they'll all be 10 pixels from the, from the top left. So that will center them visually. Let's go ahead and run this. And you can already see we've got some sparkles, right, overlapped with the pet. We just have this kind of funky look. So let's see. All right. So the only other thing I might say is we have an image in the foreground and an image in the background, but it's the exact same image, so it's kind of hard to tell. So just to demonstrate, let's remove the foreground image. Oops. Save, refresh. So there we go. This is now sparkles only in the background, right? Uh, and we could have um, only sparkles in the front foreground if we wanted. And that won't look any different because it's the exact same image. So again, it's kind of hard to tell the foreground and background overlay perfectly. So you really can't tell now if I remove the background image, it's going to look exactly the same. So maybe I won't even bother, but there you go. We have them overlapping. And again, if you decided that you wanted, you know, maybe you make another layer in between. Now that we can have all these images perfectly overlapping, you could add more. You could say, okay, I'm also going to check. Does it have, you know, a, a species specific pattern that's going to be overlaid? Okay, I'll put that in here too. And the CSS we've written is automatically going to handle all of them. It's going to say any images you put inside this layered image uh, container, which again, we can see, oops, inspect right here, right? Anything that goes in here, all the images in here, they're all going to be positioned perfectly overlapping. Great, done. Um, and that's it. That's, the, I mean, that's the trick. I don't know that I'm like, I'm, I was thinking in my brain, how do I wrap this up? It's wrapped. It's done. We have made overlapping images. Um, so there you go. Do with them what you want. Uh, I think that's the end of this video. I just need to stop myself now before I keep rambling. Uh, if you have any ideas for other things you'd like to see, definitely feel free to let me know. Uh, I also think for the next video, I'm going to generalize Pet Game a little bit. I think I'm going to rename it RPG Game and let you choose some different aesthetics because really, this is for making any kind of role-playing game. Maybe your actions aren't feed and explore. Maybe, I don't know, to go fight take over territory, you know, maybe it's one of the, it's, it could be anything. Um, so I think I'm, we're kind of limiting ourselves by saying it's got to be a pet game. It really could be any kind of RPG or not even an RPG, it could be anything. But RPG game, I think, will be, will be broad enough. And if I need to broaden it later, I can. So anyway, look forward to that um, whole playlist of other things to add, like breeding, as I mentioned, but also other things uh, that maybe you could find creative ways to combine with this video. Uh, but thank you very much for watching and goodbye.